So in chapter 10, we talked about the peripheral somatosensory system. All the peripheral nerves that are contributing to our um, body sense, basically. So we talked about how the um, somatosensory system uses a three neuron pathway to get the information to the central nervous system. So in chapter 10, we talked about the first order neuron, that um, distal peripheral sensory neuron and the different types of them. So now we're going to talk about the other parts, what happens next. So um, the first, we can think of it as the first um, event, the first um, happening in the experience of sensation is the encoding of peripheral sensations into nerve impulses in that first order neuron. Um, the second part is where it gets from the spinal cord to the brain. And there are different pathways that um, cover that. We're going to talk about that in this section. Um, the third part of the sensation experience is where it gets to the cerebral cortex and the cerebral cortex decides what is that? And we're going to talk about that in a later chapter when we're talking about the cerebral cortex. What does the cerebral cortex do with that information? And we will find out. So the learning objectives for this part of chapter 11, um, you should know what is the function of the primary som uh, somatosensory cortex. And so the primary somatosensory cortex is the place in the cerebral cortex where the sensation information ends up. And, and really, um, what it's going to do is it's going to tell us what that sensation is. It's going to help distinguish between different sensations. That's its main function, and we'll talk more about that. Um, I want you to be able to state where each of the three main types of sensory relay tracks, conscious, divergent, and non-conscious, we're going to talk about those in this section, where they start, where they end, and what type of information is transmitted in each tract. So. Um, that's, we'll start there and then we will add on. So, somatic sensation, we said in chapter 10 that it contributes to smooth, accurate movements and to the prevention or minimization of injury and to our understanding of the external world. So, a lot of this somatosensory information is not consciously perceived, but it's processed at the spinal cord level in a local neural circuits or by the cerebellum to adjust movements and posture. So a lot of those, the information from the muscle spindles and the Golgi tendon organs and the joint capsules is going right to the cerebellum. It's non-conscious. It's being used in the background to keep us balanced. Um, and then the other, uh, other tracks, and so that's carried in a non-conscious track that we'll talk about. Um, and then our other, our uh, perceived sensory information is carried in a different track. So, um, that's, so we talked about sort of the start of that. So that somatosensory information, it's going to contribute to movement eventually. So the role of sensation and movement is complex. Um, if, you, if you lose that proprioceptive somatic sensation, you get that sensory ataxia, which is the incoordination of movement, because you're not getting the proper input to tell you how to move accurately. Um, so the, there's, a, there's a huge um, functional significance to that sensory information. So the, when you have um, sensory ataxia, the brain is not getting the messages from the body of where you are in space and what needs to be corrected. So that's why you have incoordination of movements. Um, it also, the smile sensor information is protecting us against injury. Um, there are some people that have somatosensory deficits um, where they just, you know, lack sensation for one reason or another, and they are prone to um, pressure injuries. Um, so like pressure ulcers, burns, and joint damage. There are people who exist with a congenital insensitivity to pain, and it's really easy for them to self-inflict injuries without even knowing it. So it's the sort of thing like leaning against the hot stove and not knowing that 
um, it's hot and getting a burn on your hand. So um, the normal sensation, when I was a little kid, um, I guess I was probably highly motivated by cookies, I guess you will say. And um, I knew that my mother kept the cookie jar up above the stove, probably so I could get at it. So I, I'm going to climb up there, right? So I'm where I was, came in from the outside, I was wearing mittens, and I climbed up and I stuck my hand right on the, um, the stove burner. Luckily, the mittens protected me mostly, but I felt the heat and I jumped down off of there, screamed, and pulled my mitten off. Um, and so because I had the sensitivity to pain, that saved me from an injury. Also, the mittens saved me from an injury, too. Um, so if I didn't have, if I had that congenital insensitivity to pain, who knows, I might have gotten up there, well, I might have gotten those cookies, but, um, uh, you know, I might have gotten up there and uh, burned myself pretty seriously. So... The pathways that take that sensory, encoded sensory information to our brain, um, there are important distinctions among the different types of pathways and the fidelity of information that's conveyed. Meaning, when I say fidelity, I mean how true is the information to what the original source is. How accurate is that information. So having high fidelity transmission that provides accurate details um, regarding the location of the stimulus gives us the ability to identify the location of a stimulus and the pathways that um, axons in the pathways are arranged in an anatomical arrangement so we get that sensation coming up the pathway and our cerebral cortex says oh that's in your left hand or oh that's in your right foot or oh that's in the back of your left knee something like that so we have an anatomic arrangement in the cerebral cortex. Um, those individual pathways go up to the part of the cortex that deals with that area. So when we're talking about the um, pathways in the nervous system, we're only talking about neurons with long axons that connect distant regions of the nervous system um, and those long axon neurons are called projection neurons. There are all sorts of little interneurons, sort of little local messengers that take things from here to there or provide some service in the nervous system. But when we're starting to talk about somatosensory tracts and then in um, a few chapters down when we're talking about motor tracts, we're talking about the projection neurons, the ones that are really taking the information a long distance. So it's the difference between the short local roads and the highway. The pathways that we're going to be talking about are the highway. So a tract is the name for a bundle of axons with the same origin and a common termination. So somatosensory pathways are often named for the origin and termination of the tract that contain the second order neuron in the series. So we'll talk, we have um, the spinothalamic tract and the, um, you know, different, we'll talk about the, all the different tracts, but um, it's the spinothalamic tract is named because the second order neuron in that sensory series um, goes from the spine to the thalamus. So that's why it's called the spinothalamic tract. That is very convenient for us trying to learn this because the name tells us where it goes to and from. Very nice, right? So there are three main types of pathways that bring sensory information to the brain. And this is the second order neuron in that three neuron pathway. There's the conscious relay pathways, the divergent pathways, and the non-conscious relay pathways. So just from their names, you can sort of maybe guess that the conscious relay pathways we know about, the information, the divergent could be conscious or non-conscious. They go to different areas of the brain. And the non-conscious is in the background. We are not aware of it. So the conscious relay pathways transmit information to many locations in the brainstem and the cerebrum and use pathways with varying number of neurons. The information in the conscious relay pathways is transmitted with high fidelity, meaning it's very accurate. Um, the information in the conscious relay pathways allows us, as individuals, to make fine distinctions about stimuli. We say, um, oh, the light is bright 
and it's uh, slightly yellow and it's coming from the left. So we're making those fine distinctions. Okay, so in the conscious relay pathways, um, we're making those fine distinctions about stimuli. Divergent pathways, information is transmitted to many locations in the brainstem and cerebrum and uses pathways with varying number of neurons. Um, sensory information is used both the conscious and the unconscious or non-conscious levels. Um, aching pain is a form of sensation that's transmitted um, via divergent pathways in the central nervous system and we'll talk more about these in the next section. Non-conscious relay pathways um, they carry non-conscious proprioceptive and other movement related information straight to the cerebellum. Um, it does not go to the thalamus, it does not go to the cerebral cortex. It goes to the cerebellum and the information plays an essential role in automatic adjustments of movement and posture. <laughs>